today we're going to be doing a patio seam repairs. We have a bunch of seams that are peeling. So we got to go through and scrape these tape seams, add some screws to tighten up the sheetrock. Then we're going to retape it with fiberglass mesh tape. Then we're going to coat it two times and then we're going to follow through with a texture called a skip trowel. This is a patio. I know a lot of houses don't have sheetrock on patios, but the repairs are the same if it's inside or outside with the sheetrock repair. So these get weathered pretty bad, so that's why we have to go through and do the seams. More likely, this is the original paper tape that's peeling out. But I also told the homeowners I'd drop the fans for them because they couldn't take them down. So I'm going to take the fans down. They're trash anyways. See the heat just makes them droop down. That's a common thing out here. The neighbor's house over there. Same thing with their fan. The builders like to do sheetrock outside because it's cheaper per square foot to do versus like a cement stucco or wood chip lapping. Those are alternatives. The sheetrock is the cheapest alternative on these new builds for them to do. The only thing with the sheetrock outside, it does get weathered, especially if you use a cheap flat paint that's not on there pretty good. It doesn't take much time for it to start buckling these tape seams. So if you have sheetrock on your patios and you see them start cracking or peeling like that, it's time to get them fixed. Don't let it go the whole length, every seam, every seam. I'm going to be basically just a watch and learn video. I'm not going to be talking every minute of it. I'm going to just be working over here. I got everything set up. Floors are masked off. I put tarps down then plastic to catch all the mess. I got all my hanging stuff I need. Nails, screws, drywall, tools. I already got my water bucket ready. I got, I'm using 20 minute hot mud. My pans and knives. I got this all set up on a cart because I'm going to be wearing stilts because I don't want to go up and down ladder. So I basically got everything on a cart here so I can just wheel it around, work on stilts, and just plug away so I don't have to go up and down a ladder to do this 40 foot long, 10 foot high ceiling. But we're going to get to work. Just basically watch and learn. Um, it might go silent because I'm going to be listening to music and I don't want to get copyright for the music I'm going to be listening to while I'm working. This is basically my work day here. It's not going to be a full work day, but it's going to be at least a couple hours, two to three hours at the most. Get this all dug out, cleaned up, and textured, basically paint ready. Like I said, we're going to drop the fans, scrape out the tape. To scrape out the tape, you always want to use a six inch knife and just get under there and dig it out. But go ahead and watch and learn. Also on the my playlist, I have other repairs like this. They call it stress crack repairs. This is a stress crack. Basically seam repairs are cracks. The seams always fail with the paper tape on sheetrock, drywall, it always happens. So basically you can go on the other playlists I have like this with stress crack repairs. I have other patio repair videos. I also have videos on doing this type of texture in here called the skip trowel. So I have many videos on the channel. So if you haven't done it already, after this video, you can go ahead and watch other videos on my playlist.
All right. All the seams are dug out. All that paper tape. That's why we put on plastic. A lot of demo. Get all that old paper tape out of there. Put some screws in to tighten up the sheetrock. So if it is loose, it tightens up. Because the original had nails. These nail heads. The nail heads came down a little bit. Sometimes you want to use a hammer. Your hammer head on your six. You and hammer them up. Any loose stuff, scrape out. This stuff is always loose. So always keep your six with you. Basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these seams. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. It's crazy. So now we're going to do using this, this stuff. It's a 20 minute. So it sets up in 20 minutes. This is a professional grade material. It's a quick set. They call it quick set hot mud. They call it a hot mud because once you add the water to it, you have 20 minutes to work with it before it sets up almost like a cement. So it's more of a professional grade material. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, just stick to an all-purpose joint compound. All-purpose joint compounds, you put it on and you have to let it dry overnight and then you sand it. At least with the all-purpose joint compound, if you make a mistake, you can sand away your mistake. This quick set, you can sand it, but it's like trying to sand cement. So you're easier off just using a joint compound. Got fresh water here, sponges, pans. Most guys like to use a 10 inch knife to coat, but I just always keep my 6 inch, 12 inch knife ready to go. With this hot mud, you want to use fresh water. If your water gets dirty, after a while, you're going to have to get fresh water. If you use dirty water, it's going to let it set up quicker than it should. But we're going to go through now and get all these coated out. Since I dug out this area, we just have to put the mud where the area was. That's a good thing about digging out the old tape. Now you have basically a notch to fill in the mud. That way you're not coating out this whole area, crowning out joints. You don't want to have crown joints. So now we just have to do basically two tight coats on this and then you're ready for texture and the texture here is kind of hard to see but it's called a skip trowel it's a common texture out here it almost looks like this stucco type texture here this is like a stucco finish on the walls and they try to make it look like the ceiling so it's basically like a skip trowel design I took their fans down put caps on them so did that for them get them out of the way they didn't have a ladder to do it, so but everything's ready. Water, mudding tools, mud. So I'm going to go through now, and we're going to get all these coated out, okay? Like I said before, I'm going to have music on, so it'll just be silent. It's basically a watch and learn video. We're going to go through, get it all first coated. My quick set mud's going to start setting up. I'm going to take a wet sponge and six inch knife, do a slick out technique. We slick it out before it sets up. So if it's a 20 minute, we got to start slicking out between the 15 to 20 minute mark. Sometimes on semi-gloss paints, it may take a few more minutes to set up, but you want to slick it out before it fully sets up. Five minute would be always like a four to six minute window. 20 minute, always check it between the 15 and 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 35 to 42 minutes. You get the idea. You always want to catch it before it sets up. That way you can slick it out. It says easy sandable, but we don't sand hot muds. We slick out hot muds. Muds that you sand are all-purpose joint compounds. Those you sand. First coat you sand with 80 grit. Maybe second, 100 to 120 grit. Final coat, 150 to 220. But yeah.